Hello everyone. In this series of video, I'd like to talk about uh, building a full stack cloud native application using the new SAP Business Application Studio tool. Uh, so let's get started and I'll show you how easy it is to build a full stack application. Uh, so I've, I have the SAP Business Application Studio open. So I will go into terminal and open a new terminal. And I'd like to put all my projects under the projects folder. So I go into CD projects. Now what you can see is uh, if I go into file and I open, uh, this has like this uh, file structure here. And I'd like to put all my projects in the projects folder. Uh, so right now under my projects folder, I have a bunch of uh, projects already, but let me go ahead and create a new project. Uh, so I will go ahead and use the command CDS in it. And this allows us to initialize an MTA project. And the name that I'm going to give is my MTA. So this is the name of my project that I'm going to create. Uh, so I do this and a new full stack uh, application, an uh, MTA application is initialized. Uh, so I, now I can click on open workspace and there should be this my MTA folder that got created. So let me go in here and I say open. So this opens up my workspace uh, for the newly initialized MTA project. And as you can see that there is already some folder structures that are created for you. Uh, so by convention, uh, the idea is to keep all your DB artifacts in the DB folder, your service layer artifacts in the SRV folder, and your UI artifacts in the app folder. Uh, so let's start with like a very basic uh, MTA application, and then we'll expand from there. So let me also open up my terminal, new terminal, and this one is already in the MTA uh, directory, so which is good. So I go into my SRV folder, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it pro project-service.cds. So I'm going to call it project-service.cds. And this uh, creates up this file here. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create like an entity. So, um, and I'll come to what this project does. Uh, in a, in a second, but in the meantime, let me go ahead and create an entity. And I'm going to create an entity called users. Now the convention is to create the entities with a plural name. So users, I'm going to create it with a, uh, with a, uh, with a plural name. And uh, all of these entities need to have a primary key. So I'm going to say key ID and I'm going to call it, I have a data type of integer. And then I'm going to also have a name field. And I'll have uh, this as, uh, let me put a call in here. So that's why it's complaining. And I will have a name field uh, with the string of a maximum 100 characters. And I'll also have an email also with string 100 characters. Okay, so this has my entity, which is my users. And what I'll also do is I'll also create another entity called projects. Uh, so, and have some kind of a relationship between these two. Again, use a plural name for your entity name. And I will have a key. Um, and an ID key, which is of integer again. And I will have a name field, uh, which is of string 100. And then I'll have another field for description, uh, which is, let's say, string 1000. Okay, so I have these two entities and let me format this document. Okay, now by adding this uh, service here, this is automatically going to expose these two entities as an OData service. So that's how simple it is. You have the definition of your entities. Uh, you have some kind of association. Uh, we don't have it right now, uh, but I'll go ahead and add it. And you have this service here, and this will expose this as a 
um, as a OData service. Uh, so let's have some kind of a relationship between these two entities. Uh, so user, a user can only be working, can have only one project, uh, whereas a project can have many users. Uh, so a user can have only one project. So the way we do it is we create another field called project and we just say association to projects. Now a user can have only one project. Uh, so in this case, we don't have we shouldn't specify any cardinality. So by looking at it, we know that the user has only one project. Uh, whereas a project can have many users. So in this case, we do have to specify the cardinality. So we can say many, and we can say they have many users. And when we use the word many, we also have to have a on condition. So we tell how it is uh, connected. Uh, so we just say user.project. Uh, equals dollar self. Uh, so this is how we specify the relationship. Uh, so when it comes to um, just a single uh, cardinality, we it's very simple. You just say association to and then the project name. Uh, when there is many cardinality, then you have to use the many keyword and then you have to use the on uh, to specify the relationship. So at this moment, we are re really pretty much done. Um, so this is how simple it is uh, to have the entire uh, like OData service created. So at this moment, I can use this uh, command CDS watch. And again, this command is so simple that it, it automatically jump starts everything. Uh, so I do CDS watch. Now you can see that it is deploying to a SQLite in-memory database, and it's already serving this project at slash project, and it's opening up a service that I can see. So if I click on open a new tab, I can look at the metadata document, and I can look at the project's data. There is no data in here uh, because there is, uh, we didn't uh, initialize it with any data. And in Fiori, we don't have uh, any kind of a UI here either. Uh, but at least uh, what we have is uh, we have a fully functional OData service with CRUD functionality and all of that good stuff. And uh, uh, just one file and everything is taken care of. Uh, so in the next session, what we'll do is we'll build up on this and we'll kind of uh, put the, like the idea is to keep the entities in a different folder. Uh, so we want to keep the users in the DB folder, the entity projects in the DB folder. We'll initialize it with some initial data and so on. Uh, but this uh, session, I just wanted to show how quickly you can build an OData service right from the ground up, right from uh, building the tables all the way to exposing it as OData service. And even like a very uh, rudimentary Fury Elements uh, UI as well. Okay, see you in the next session.